Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are revisiting one of my favorite open source projects. This one is called Material Maker and if you're a regular to the channel, you've seen me cover this a couple of times and that is because the author just keeps pumping out new great releases and this is basically the closest thing to an open source alternative to substance painter and substance designer there is. There's this and armor paint and I think this one is improving at a faster rate and this one is more about procedural material generation but it also does texture painting and this is one guy hobby project, which is just amazing to me. Now looking at this user interface, you may be thinking to yourself, hmm, that looks kind of familiar. That that blue, those fonts, that interface is yes, this one is built using the Godot game engine. And by the way, you do have the ability to theme it. If you want your eyes to burn, you can switch to the light theme. Or if you want darkness, instead of that blue, you've got this one. This is actually my favorite look uh, by far. Another thing, you might find that the fonts look a little bit off. It's because I'm running in with font scaling. There is DPI scaling in here. It does get a little choppy on the fonts, but that's what you get for recording in 4K. And this guy is all about generating texture. So let's look at the simplest example you got here. You got an output material here, uh, albedo, metallic, rough disemission, all the things you would expect. We could come in here and basically just say, all right, let's make a material red. All right, there, you've made a red box. Probably not the most exciting thing you wanted to do. Let's set that back to white and let's use this to show a real world example. Now, first thing you can do is you can set this preview up to actually show a model of your choice. So I've got an object file. I've downloaded this Atai Interceptor. Uh, it's in Dropbox, Dropbox temp, Atai, Atai Interceptor. All right, so there we go. So now we have a 3D model of a TIE fighter that we can work with. By the way, you can customize the inter interface. If I want to do, I can drag that guy over to here and we can give the preview a little bit more space to work with, which is what I kind of like to do. All right, so we got our work surface over here. We have our model preview over here. Now I do have some weirdness in getting it to scale out. Um, it will eventually let me scale out, but it does seem to be something that's a little bit glitchy. I'm not 100% certain why, but that's good enough for now. So here you got the environment. You'll notice we have an HDRI map in the background that's lighting it. Uh, you have options there. You can create your own, by the way, uh, but we're just gonna go ahead and go to, sorry, environment, select, and you've got three configured options. We've got the forest right here, uh, Moonless Golf Course right there, or a studio environment like so. And now we're gonna do is set up the normal textures on this guy. Nothing really magical going on there. We'll just come here, uh, tie, and there's the color channel right there. There is the ambient occlusion map. We'll bring in the normal map and we'll use the emissive map. That's good enough for now. So uh, each one just kind of connects it. So your color channel goes into the albedo map. Your emissive channel goes into your emission map, uh, which by the way, just set up the, the lighting right there. All of these are configurable by the way. So you can, you can set the amount of emissiveness of the light or you can have it dimmer or you can have it. The defaults are actually pretty solid to what you want. Uh, ambient occlusion goes in there and the normal map drops into there. And there is a fully textured TIE fighter. Uh, and setting it up is pretty simple. You, obviously you can see a preview going on. Uh, you can also set it by the way in the background. Uh, so again, I could load that particular model up uh, and configure it to work with my TIE fighter like so. So it shows up in the background. Now I do find it scales my interface. I find it annoying, to be honest. And you can also set up for a 2D preview. So you'll notice we have a 2D preview right here, which whenever you've got a map selected, it will show that result there, or a generated map, uh, it will show the end result normally. All right, so there we go. There is our work. And now what you do normally is you start creating these uh, networks of uh, things to go on. So let's say instead of doing this, uh, this level of emissiveness, we wanted to have like evil TIE fighter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop in runes. So you see here, we have a number of different nodes we can work with. They start combining them together uh, into some very complex patterns, but I'm just gonna go ahead. We'll drop this runes in here and we will wire them into the emissive channel. So now you're seeing we're giving off light uh, here, various different places. Okay, there we go. So I gotta hold down control to get it to zoom past a certain point. All right, there we go. So you see, uh, we've got these uh, runes in the image. Now, obviously, there's there's not quite enough of them. And again, if I select this guy, you'll see the preview of it down here in the 2D preview. I'm going to set this instead to, say, 24 by 24. So we're going to get a lot more sized runes. Actually, let's make this 36. 36. Also, by the way, you can, you can drag and slide sideways instead of numeric entry. So 36 by 36. Now, the challenge here is that's not really evil. We want them to be red. 
Uh, so what we're going to do is find another node here. We'll do a colorized node. Now you're gonna notice there's texture version and filter version. What we want here is filter version. And it's really, again, it's just, you're making this network of nodes. So we're gonna drop that then, the output of that into the emissive channel. We'll pick our parameter here and we'll make them red. All right, there we go. So we just made a very evil looking TIE fighter. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, now this is my uh, crude approach to it. You can see how the tool works, but what we're going to do now is show you a much better uh, result. And that is by heading over to the Material Maker website, which by the way, uh, is kind of new. Uh, and it's called, it's at materialmaker.org. I will have links to everything relevant down below. So if you wanna check it out yourself, uh, and you can see some really cool community made um, materials and you can go ahead and you can download them yourself. So we come up here to the top, we'll go to materials. And here you can see a like 16 different pages of pre-made materials. So um, like keyboard there, you've got uh, fur being created, uh, lava. This is what I used in my thumb. I'm gonna use it because I've actually already downloaded that one. Each one of these is just a ptext file. So if you wanna grab something, basically just come on here, click the download, it will pull it down for you. So now we're gonna go ahead and look at one of those in action instead. So I've already got one downloaded. I'll go to my download folders right here and you will find stylized lava ptext. And we'll just drop that in. It's its own project. Here we go. So you'll notice here, you got a tab uh, interface here for handling things. This is now got lava on our guy, which by the way, if we want to move this guy back to a different shape, we'll go here and we'll put the lava on a sphere. And there you can see the end result of this texture node. So this is the kind of stuff that you can create out of Material Maker if you spend a little bit more time with it. And here you can see the pieces that go together. By the way, you can zoom in and out over here or using control and mouse wheel. And you've got these different um, blocks of things going together. So we've got tones coming in, mathematical operations being done on them, in this case, max between A and B mapping that into the occlusion or inverting it to create a depth, normal mapping, emission uh, to create the emission channel out of the Elvado channel and so on. So that is how you create these networks. Now you may notice this little things like here, there's rocks and rocks generate this. Well, what the heck is a rocks? Well, come here, look at hierarchy. You're gonna see this is built out of, so we've got rocks, we have Elbido, which is a more complex example. So I'm just gonna go here to rocks and we'll double click it and you're gonna see the rocks itself is its own node graph. So this is for creating all of the rocks you see here. It starts by creating a polygonal shape, uh, adding some noise, tiling it um, four times over or two by two, uh, slope blurring on it, tiering it, applying some math to it, and then having output from that. That creates three output nodes that if we head on back over here, you're going to see our rocks has those three output nodes. So you could create your own nodes uh, pretty easily and organize it into this pretty cool hierarchy. Same thing here for generating the roughness map. And then we've got for creating a missions map. And anything you like, anything you're working with that, that works out for you, what you could do is you could come up here and basically I can say, okay, tools, add selected node to my library. So then I could, I could be in here, for example, and say I want to reuse rocks. I could go ahead and just basically add rocks into my library. And then now it will be available here in the library. So if I get rid of my filter down at the bottom here, we would then have rocks that we could reuse somewhere else. So you can see there are a number of different uh, nodes here. You can work together to build up these elaborate examples. And as you can see over here, you can create some pretty cool materials by working with this guy. So you're creating procedural textures essentially. And then when you're ready to use them, you head on back over here, you say file, export material. You're gonna see out of the box, you've got support for Blender formats, could do Unity, HDRP Unity, and Unreal Engine. So it does the import work for you, makes it ready to go in those particular environments. So that is Material Maker, a very, very quick hands-on version of it. And here's where it gets even cooler. This is uh, where it's moving more into the Substance Painter world. And this is where you can actually paint your project. So we're gonna do a new paint project. So I'm gonna pick my model and we'll use the TIE Fighter model again. So that is available in Dropbox, DB Temp, TIE, TIE. All right, there we go. We'll, we'll do this. You can do it anywhere up to 4K resolution. I'll stick with 1K and let's create it. So you're gonna notice here, our new paint project shows up as a uh, another tab. So we can switch back to our material over there. So here we are, and what you're doing here is you create a paintbrush. So the current paintbrush that you want to go ahead and paint with, you do it right here. So if we wanted to paint with a material, we could take a texture material of some kind. Uh, this isn't going to make any sense because I'm about to drop a full texture in here, but uh, I could come in here and go, all right, drop a uh, stock of a temp, tie, 
All right, so we'll paint with this. Like I said, it's not gonna make any sense whatsoever, but I can set that as my elbow channel of my brush, and then we can literally start painting our objects. You can paint in full 3D now in Material Maker, and that is pretty awesome. But at the same time, I also have a number of different things down here. So I can actually create my own brushes on the fly. So if I wanted to do a brick wall, I could drop a brick in here. Uh, that is going to drop out the, uh, the brick pattern comes out there. So I'm gonna drop in a colorized node. So we want these bricks to be red. So we'll drop that in there. So we can start building up these nodes. Uh, and then let's go here, make you reddish. All right, so there we go. We'll drop that into the elbow channel. And now you're seeing we are painting with red brick. And if I want to do the same thing, I could create norm, normal map. I'll take this guy in, drop that into the, oh, there is no normal. Why is there no normal? All right, I'm not 100% certain what I did wrong there, but I, I swore you could paint with a normal map as well. But here you can see I'm now using my normal map to paint. Probably not what you want to do. Uh, but at the same time, also you'll notice here you've got brushes, and then that goes back to over here where you've got a couple of brushes available to download, things like zippers. Um, but you've got a number of predefined ones. So, for example, if I want to paint with rusty iron, I could go ahead and go basically open that brush up. So here you can see this is the current surface. So, again, the output is a brush node, and now I'm painting with rusty iron. There we go. Paint over everything with that brush right there. So you can now actually paint 3D objects. And then when you are happy, once again, you can export that material out to a number of different environments. So this functionality is new. You'll also notice over here, there's the option of doing paint layers, procedural layers, and mask layers. So if you want to have it so that it only affects where the mask is in black or whatever, you could set up a mask layer on top of something. So for example, I could add a new paint layer. And then on that paint layer, I could create a mask layer that would control where it draws and so on. So there is the beginnings of a substance painter type program being done here as well. You're also going to notice we have some tools here, uh, like a straight out fill. Um, not sure if that's working in this particular case. Um, fill. Okay. Oh, it's because I've got the. So we can do. Fill, there we go. I had the mask selected, that was the problem. So if you'd done, if I wanted to do like a straight black brush, I could have picked it down to black and done that. So you set up your brushes down here. You got your paint modes, your various different tools here. So one for freehand, lines, straight lines, filling. And then of course we got an eraser in here as well. And you've got multiple different layers of drawings you can do. So if I now want to say, okay, I want to paint with snow instead, uh, do a snow brush. Again, I'm back on my, uh, my mask layer, but then we start layering a layer of snow on top, or I can actually literally replace it with snow. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the idea. We got blur brushes in here, and you can create your own brush networks that you can then in turn paint with. Some really, really cool stuff going on here. Um, it, it's definitely one of those powerful tools, and if you really learn how these nodes work, you can create some really interesting textures. Again, you can see the work that other much more competent people have done available over here. And you can pull any one of these download down, set them as a brush and start painting with them. Uh, so it's, it's really a cool tool for creating uh, procedural textures and now for painting as well. So that is Material Maker, which by the way, if you want to go ahead and check it out, is available up on itch.io. It is available for uh, Windows and Linux targets. So if you want to go ahead and download it, it's there. If you like the artist's work, do, do make sure to support him. He has updated this constantly. And again, this is one of the most impressive projects out there. Uh, again, another one that's worth checking out, especially more on the painting side, more mature on the painting side, there is armor paint as well. Uh, but th this guy now, it is getting inklings of the painting functionality uh, built in here. And the interop between the two is getting better and better. So you can create these really cool materials and then bring them over here and actually paint with them. And you can see here, you're creating these elaborate brush setups uh, that you could create with. And so at any particular time, oh, by the way, you've also got three different ways that you can paint, stamp, pattern, and then UV pattern. Uh, so a lot of times what you're actually gonna wanna use is stamp, which is actually probably why it was working a little bit weird for me. And by the way, you also have the ability to delete layers like so. So add a paint layer back on top. 
do oh, I'm still in fill mode. And there you see. So it's definitely one of those projects I highly recommend you check out. And again, the artist just keeps adding more and more cool tools to this one. And you can see right out of the box, the fact that it exports out to these various different game engines, that's what it's made for. So this is literally the closest thing that is out there to a free alternative to Substance Designer and slowly Substance Painter. And it is a really cool program on its own. And I do recommend that you check it out. It is not a substance replacement, but it does do a lot of the same functionality for, um, it's not even a fraction of the price, it's free. It's a pretty amazing program, and also it's open source built on the Godot engine. Let me know what you think of Material Maker in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.